Hi, I'm Brevin Tillman, and I'll be presenting PhoviaCam, a MEMS mirror-enabled foveating camera. This work was done with Elk Jane, Sylvia Ferrari, and Sanjeev Kopal. Various animal eyes selectively distribute resolution to important areas in their field of view. Selective imaging is crucial for efficiently expending neuronal resources only where it matters. The fovea in humans is a highly sensitive area in the retina that focuses resources to our direct line of sight. This lets us efficiently process our field of view only where we want and need. Birds have two fovea, one that operates similar to ours and another specifically for tracking slow moving objects. In the ocean, cuttlefish leverage selective pupil contraction to see in dark areas. And mantis shrimp adaptively slide a polarization band to enhance contrast based on the polarization structure of the light traveling through the water. So we built a camera that can selectively distribute resolution to only important areas of the scene. And we do this by pointing a camera at a programmable MIMS mirror. And this MIMS mirror can tilt in a 2D plane and update at up to 120 kilohertz. So we leverage this to give simultaneous views of many regions of interest in the scene all at once. So here's a demonstration of the men's mirror tilting in a 2D plane. Here is a demonstration of phobia cam. The top right is the raw footage of the MEMS mirror swiveling between the two red objects in the scene. And the bottom videos are the simultaneous extracted views from the raw footage. We designed the optics of the camera such that uh, the MEMS mirror completely fills the field of view to prevent big netting. And we use a MEMS mirror because they're quicker than motor-based GABA mirrors. Notice that we put more pixels onto the objects in the bottom videos and this gives us a lower footprint compared to a very large resolution camera that would capture everything at once, like the helper camera. Here is the Fovea Cam prototype. We use a 3.6 millimeter Miracle MEMS mirror a 220 hertz FLIR machine vision camera equipped with a 35 millimeter lens. We use a Miracle MEMS mirror controller to update the position of the MEMS mirror and to keep the MEMS mirror and camera in sync. Our work is similar to catadaptic cameras, which focus on inserting mirrors into a camera's field of view. In the top left image, the authors insert two planar mirrors to simulate a stereo vision system. You only have as many viewpoints as mirrors in this case, so increasing viewpoints becomes expensive. In the bottom left image, the authors insert a curved mirror to greatly increase the camera's field of view to 360 degrees. However, you sacrifice angular resolution. In the right image, the authors build a dynamic projection mapping system, and this uses one-dimensional GABA mirrors to track a single object. Our work differs from this in that we use a single mirror and we develop a robust control algorithm to update the mirror to track multiple objects in the scene. Miracle MEMS mirrors come with a cover glass protecting the MEMS mirror. In the specific model we had, the cover glass reflected significant amounts of light in the visible ranges. In the left column, you can see this induces significant ghosting artifacts. So to overcome this, we insert a bandpass filter because within the 800 to 900 range, the cover glass reflected the least amount of light. It is known with Galvo and MEMS mirrors, they require a settling time before triggering the camera exposure if you want deblurred images. In our case, the settling time was 0.2 milliseconds and this varied based on the resolution and number of measurements we sent at a time to the MEMS mirror. To begin explaining how we control our foveating camera, view this demonstration of what we would like the foveating camera to do. So the red square is the foveating camera's entire field of view, and we would like to distribute this square onto all regions of interest in the scene.
we would like to distribute this resolution so fast such that it emulates multiple cameras looking at each region of interest. So in this specific example, it would be like two cameras, one looking at the bunny and one looking at the bird. Formally, let's model the bunny and bird as bivariate Gaussian distributions. QR is the current scan path the MIMSMIR takes between regions of interest. And F1 and F2 are the centers of the respective bivariate Gaussians. Finally, UR is the control vector for how we update QR. We define FT as the accumulation of both bivariate Gaussians. And then we define PD as the probability of detecting these bivariate Gaussians along the current MIMSMIR scan path. So PD is the probability of detecting a region of interest along the current MIMSMIR scan path. So we would like to maximize this probability with respect to the control vector. And the control vector is how QR or the MIMSMIR scan path is updated. We update this control vector by gradient descent. And I encourage you to read our supplementary material for how we derive with respect to the control vector. Once the control vector is optimized, we move the mirror along the new path. We can chain new regions of interest for moving the mirror to as many targets as we want. So our method is not limited to two bivariate Gaussians. We show the utility of placing higher angular resolution onto regions of interest with our camera by comparing it to a smartphone and eye tracking applications. To do this, we implement the eye tracking for everyone network. And this network was trained on smartphone images and it outputs an XY coordinate of where the user was looking on their screen. Our data has a different color distribution and eye angle pronunciation than the data used to train the eye tracking for everyone network. Our data was taken at three meters, whereas the data used to train the eye tracking for everyone network was taken at 25 centimeters. To overcome this, we fine tuned the network with a spread out training pattern. We also fine tuned the network with iPhone data at three meters to respect the eye angle difference. Here's an example of data collection with the iPhone 6 and our Fovea cam. Here's a qualitative comparison between Fovea Cam and the iPhone 6. The first row is one test set and the bottom row is another test set. The ground truth is in red, Fovea Cam is in blue, and the iPhone 6 is in green. Here is a quantitative comparison between Fovea Cam and the iPhone 6. The top table is one test set and the bottom table is another test set. After fine tuning with three epics, our camera outperforms the smartphone in every case. This supports that placing higher angular resolution onto a face improves eye tracking accuracy compared to a larger sensor. Thank you.